Okay, so this is the uh, review session, MATSE 112 for exam number two. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Go ahead. Yes? What does the 1D3 oscillator model describe? Sure. So, uh, so what, did, what did we use the oscillator model for? Did you look through the notes? I looked at the notes, but I wasn't sure. It's, is it for... Is it like molecules that are... Is it brittle molecules, or is that... It, it's getting there. That, that's a part of it. What, what sort of concept was the oscillator model attached to? What was the quantity we were looking for? Oh, it's um, molar heat capacity. Molar heat capacity, right? So, oscillator model... can be used to describe molar okay and so if this is our atom whatever it is and it's oscillating back and forth well, I don't want to drop like that but it's oscillating back and forth in 1D how much energy is available to this thing in one dimension AT and 1D. What does that mean? What is T? Temperature. temperature. So as you increase the temperature, does this thing have more or less energy? More. more. Vibrates more, right? What's K? Um, Boltzmann's yeah. constant. constant, right? So what's the molar equivalent of K? So K is per particle, or per atom, per molecule, whatever. Uh, if I have a mole of stuff, what do I use? R. R, yeah. K times N A equals R. So you can figure out the units. I'm just going to check to make sure that this is actually recording. OK, great. Um, so, okay, so now KT describes how much energy this thing has in 1D. How much energy is it going to have in 3D? 3 KT uh, times NA for moles, which is 3 RT per mole. Uh, let's see, and then, and then so this is, describes the 3D oscillator model, and this describes when you change the temperature one degree, heat capacity. There has to be a change in temperature, right? So what does heat capacity mean? I raise the temperature, how much does my uh, atom absorb, or I give it a certain amount of heat, how much is it going to heat up? So if I change delta T equals 1, for every 1 degree, something that obeys this can absorb 3RT, uh, 3R of heat. And so the uh, molar heat capacity, that was CV, right? CV equals 3RT for an ideal system. So when you multiply this thing out, I think you get something like 24.5 kilojoules mole K, right? Let me pull up the exact slides here. Did I do it right or am I wrong somehow? You're right. Okay. K in the KT is Boltzmann's constant. Yeah. Small k, small k equals. Okay. 
So KT describes how much energy is available at a given temperature. So think of KT as energy, and that tells us that R actually has units of energy, right? So what's a good value of R? What value of R did we use in these energy calculations? 8.314 kilojoules per mole, right? Okay, so let me see. Let me just... Uh, So this derivation where you come up with a, a molar heat capacity, so we expect CV for a perfect 3D oscillator, for something that can oscillate in 3D, we expect CV equal 24.5 kilojoules per mole K. Now you had a homework problem where the constant volume heat capacity was less than that, right? So how can the CV be less than that magic value that I just gave you. So if it's a 1D material, sure, yeah, very special case. Uh, if it's brittle, right, if you have something that's really brittle, is it an oscillator anymore? No, it, it's constrained, right? It can't vibrate in three directions unconstrained, and so um, we showed that for brittle materials, this is in lecture five, that's probably why you don't remember it. <coughs> oh. <coughs> so, So in 1D, we say we have KT energy. In 3D, it's 3RT times Avogadro's number, so it's 3KT times N0. So if you do all this math, uh, it's 24.9 joules per mole K. Sorry. 24.9 joules per mole K. So this is basically 3 times R is how it works out. So 3 times R is this, and this delta T is in there because that gives us per mole degree C. So for 1 degree temperature per mole C, you have 3R. So how this works out is that for a material where you have motion of the atoms, so you have this free oscillator in all three directions, this is most materials. This is polymers. This is water. This is other things like that. Gas. Um, uh, this is uh, metals. Because metals are not brittle, right? They're malleable. So this is most things, except if you have a very rigid lattice, silica, alumina, they're very, very brittle. And so until you warm those atoms up to very high temperature, at very high temperatures, these become perfect 3D oscillators now, and their molar heat capacity, CV equals 3R, <coughs> goes to the limiting value. But when you cool these atoms down, they're really locked into place. And so when you cool the, these ceramics down, they don't have KT oscillation in each direction. They have half a KT, or 0.1 KT in each direction. So they're not as free to move, and that drops the molar heat capacity based on this chart right here. So for gold, what would we expect? Gold to metal, yeah. What would, what would it look like on, on this curve? 
as a function of temperature, what would gold do? Flat across, right? So gold is malleable, so gold would be flat across this line. So this oscillator model helps us build up why we get these molar heat capacities. Look, all these are the same. What's specific heat capacity? Look at the units. Joules per gram per degree Celsius. So how do you go between molar and specific heat capacity? <coughs> Molecular weight, right? So we know how many grams per mole copper is, aluminum is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so we can interconvert between. Them. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, that degree C is also the negative one, correct or no? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, this is to the negative one. Has to be. Yeah. Sorry, lazy nomenclature. Yeah. So this. Joules per mole K, joules per mole C, whatever you want. So just remember, the most important part of this is what is it in 1D? What's the energy in 1D? So it's either KT or RT. What's the energy in 3D? 3KT or 3RT? How do you get this number? 3 times R is this. And this decrease. Why do some materials decrease while other materials uh, would have a flat line right here. Yes? Why do we see a nonlinear relationship between the um, specific heat and the um, I can't remember the term. It's uh, per mole per gram. Well, why